I get asked what my favourite world in Wizard101 and Pirate101 is all the time, so I thought I would rate every world out of 5 for art, story, fun and music to determine what my favourite world in both games is. Before we start, this is completely my opinion and may not be the same as yours, and if that is the case, leave your favourites in the comments below. Last place, number 22nd, is Azteca. I'm sure most people are not too surprised to see this, but it got a score of 8. It scored the worst world for both story and fun, both receiving a score of 1. The redeeming qualities of Azteca is the art and music. The music is very well done, and the world doesn't look terrible, which means at least while you are defeating dinosaurs over and over and over again, you can have some nice views. Big props to the floating mountains, which is honestly one of my favourite areas in the game. Not doing much better on the score front is Dragon Spire coming in at 21st. The world also scored an 8, it was the worst world for art and also fun, tying again with Azteca. Like Azteca, Dragon Spire's biggest strength is its music. The combat theme in particular is honestly something I have listened to on repeat multiple times. The story is good as well and it's a satisfying end to the first arc. Many people are fond of the story since it is the conclusion of Malastare's story, or at least that's what we're led to believe at the time. Coming in at 20th is Zafaria. Zafaria is a very mediocre world which also scored 8 points. It however did not place last in any category, receiving solid 2s across the board. After the more recent changes to Zafaria, playing through it again recently, I was really surprised on how much more streamlined and less rage inducing the world is. However, I still feel very sorry for all the Greyhorns lost on our journey, bringing the fun down a little bit. Nineteenth is Crocotopia, also scoring 8 points. Similar to Zafaria, it wasn't last place in any category and scored 2s across the board. It beats out Zafaria because it has a lot more nostalgia value as it is our first time outside of Wizard City. The biggest criticisms are its art, which is very outdated, and the story which is quite plain and it's not exactly as fun as some of the other worlds. The music is good and has some very good Egyptian vibes, but it's not the most memorable. Eighteenth place goes to Chrysalis, coming in with 10 points. The biggest redeeming factors of Chrysalis is the art and story. For those who have read or listened to the story of Chrysalis, it is actually very engaging. The hunt and the downfall of Morganth is a great way to end the drawn out second arc. However, for me, when going to Chrysalis, it's not always been very fun. For much of the first part, you are heading back and forth between areas, making it feel like you're making little to no progress. It also doesn't help when you're going to areas and fighting the exact same mobs over and over and over again. This makes the world, at least part 1, feel very stale. The pace and fun picks up in part 2, but isn't enough to improve the score from a 2. The music of Chrysalis is very samey, you can go anywhere and it always seems to be exact same music, which is good because it shows consistency, but lacks the diversity that makes soundtracks of other worlds so great, and that's why it only received a 2. Coming in at number 17 is Celestia, also scoring 10. Celestia was our first introduction to the second arc and the Morganth storyline. It also brought us Astral Magic, which is a huge game changer to the feel of battles. The art of Celestia is good and there are some absolutely stunning locations and assets like the entrance to the Trial of Spheres and the Solarium are my two favourites. The music is good too. The Celestia combat theme is one of my all-time favourite tracks. However, it only received a 3 because similar to Chrysalis, I feel there's a lack of diversity. Story and fun are average at best and both scored 2. Most of the quests feel very stale. There are numerous defeating collects, which, as everyone would agree, suck. Number 16 is the Arcanum. Now to be honest, the only reason why this world is so low is because there's not exactly a story for this world as it is tied too much into other worlds. 
and fun can't really be rated as it's just a hub world and there's not much to do. For that reason, fun and story only received a one, but it was redeemed by its art, which I scored a four and music, which is also a four. The Arcanum looks absolutely beautiful. The model of the spiral in the middle of the Panopticon, the floating gold glyphs in the repository look absolutely stunning. This is enhanced by the calming and peaceful music of the area which provide a nice break to the more intense atmosphere of questing worlds. The best way to describe the Arcanum is Ravenwood but peacefully floating in the nothing. It serves as a fantastic end game hub which is why I am upset that it is this low. Mirage comes in at number 15, the middle child of the third arc, not exactly my most favourite world to quest through, but it is not terrible and really sets the mood for Imperia. Mirage scored a 3 for art and music, and 2 for story and fun, giving it a total of 10. Mirage looks really good if you love vast open sand of nothingness. It's not exactly my aesthetic, but it was really revolutionary having vast dunes that you can explore almost endlessly. The music, again not my favourite, very good and well composed. I have a feeling that they wanted to try and make Crocotopia, but better. And this is truly Crocotopia 2.0. Story sets up the finale of the third arc nicely. I do however feel that at times it is very convoluted and always get lost with the fighting between the factions of Mirage. I feel like the story and gameplay as a whole feels drawn out. Overall, the world for me is the worst third arc world, but is a huge improvement over Azteca and Chrysalis. <laughs> The lowest rated pirate world is Cool Ranch, coming in at place number 14. Cool Ranch is a really cool world, and recently I have fallen in love with it a lot more. However, it is very long, has lots of defeating collects, a lot of defeat 10, and a lot of defeat 10 ship combats. The biggest redeeming factor of Cool Ranch is the music. Cool Ranch music is very good. I gave it a score of 4, which puts it solidly in the top 10 worlds for its music. The different layers and feeling of the music make sailing the never-ending skyways a lot less painful. All the other aspects were scored a 2, and I do think while writing this script I was a little bit harsh on the art score. There are some really cool out-of-the-way areas that are amazing, but the whole world is very samey and most areas don't have much variety, which ultimately bring down the score significantly. <laughs> Mushu comes in at number 13, the first shared world on the list. I rated both games and averaged them out. The biggest redeeming factor of Mushu is Pirate. If Mushu wasn't added in Pirate, it would be at the bottom of the list. Wizards Mushu is ugly, boring, and feels very, very, very unfinished. I don't like saying this, but it is probably the worst world in Wizard. I would rate it under Azteca. Pirate Mushu, however, scored a 5 for art, giving it the number one spot unmatched by any other world. The music is amazing and adds a lot to the story, which is good. It lacks the most in fun, but that's because I prefer shorter worlds and especially a lot less sailing between areas. Mushu and Pirate is amazing, and for any Wizard 101 player, I would recommend having a look at it yourself, as you will be shocked. <laughs> Aquila is in the 12th spot. Aquila sucks, it does. This pirate world was the last world before Valencia Part 2 came out. It is long, it has too many grinds, bad drop rates for defeating collects, and a lot of high level ship fights. Aquila got a score of 12. It looks great and it is in the top 10 best looking worlds. The music is fine, however since there are not many places to go, it gets very repetitive and feels like you are only listening to two themes the whole time. The story is average, it does what it needs to do. Many complaints about the story in this world come from the fact that it was the end for so long and doesn't really get us closer to the goal of El Dorado. Fun, as I have mentioned, is where this world really lacks. I would recommend upping the drop rate and reducing the number of fights as it makes questing very unfun seeing defeat 10 after defeat 10. <laughs>
coming in at the halfway mark, number 11 is Wisteria, the first side world to enter this list. Wisteria is a quaint, fun break. It is one of the earlier worlds, but I still think it looks very good. The areas all have their own unique feels that some worlds so far have not had. The music is good, very whimsical, and adds to the take a break vibe of the world. The story is fun, competing in an interworld magic competition and beating the champ is very fun. It lacks in a bit of fun for most of the other quests. I would have preferred a little bit more focus on the Spiral Cup than sorting out other problems in Wisteria, but hey, I guess we are the cleanup crew for the pesky magicless pigs. Avalon comes in at number 10. This is many people's favourite world and I know I'm going to get angry comments about this one. I just don't really like it as much as other people do. It is by far the best second arc world and it is very well done, looks good, but I couldn't give it more than 12. I gave it 3's across the board because it's a good world, music is good, story is good, the world looks good and is a refreshing sight after the fires of Dragonspire, the bubbles of Celestia and the savannas of Zafaria. It's fun to quest through. I really don't have too many complaints about it, but it's simply not as good as other worlds later in this list. Another pirate world comes in at number 9, Skull Island, also receiving a score of 12 and is very similar to Avalon getting 3s across the board. The only reason why it beats Avalon is the nostalgia factor. Being the first pirate world, it lives in many players' hearts a lot more than later worlds, boosting people's feelings about it. My favourite part of Skull Island is the interlude of Cool Ranch, where it provides a nice break of the Cool Ranch grind to set up this Marleybone story and the trials and tribulations of Catbeard. All the areas have a unique feel and the story is solid whether it's from Guns Gold, Gortez or Catbeard. <laughs> Number 8 goes to Grizzleheim and Wintertusk, second side world. Most people tend to split these two up, but they are technically one world. Grizzleheim is great as it has a huge diversity and difficulty. The easy parts of Grizzleheim, and then in contrast the whole of Wintertusk, which provides a real challenge before entering Celestia. It scored 13, with 3s across the board and a 4 for fun. I feel like the challenge of Wintertusk and the modularity of the world make it fun. You don't have to do it and can save it all for later or do it piece by piece. I would highly recommend doing it before starting Arc 3 as it makes more sense story wise but this video isn't about telling spoilers. <laughs> Number 7 goes to Monkeyster. Now I'm going to say I'm surprised by this because I've never really rated it too highly as a world but compared to other pirate worlds and a lot of wizard worlds it's very good. It's short, it's fun as m the majority of it is dungeons which is a lot better than defeating collect quests. The story is well done, makes sense and doesn't deviate too much from the issues your pirate is trying to face. <laughs> Number 6 is Valencia. Now I will say this once, this would have been in the top 3 if Valencia Part 2 didn't exist. Valencia Part 1 is exactly what I love in worlds, high stakes, looks good, doesn't take 5 years to complete. That's not to say it's without its flaws, but overall Valencia Part 1 is my second favourite world in Pirate. However, it gets dropped down because of Part 2. Part 2 came out in 2016 and there is a bit of conflict over it. It was desperately needed to wrap up the story at the time since there was no pirate content. However, it was a rushed product that isn't long enough to fit the amount of story left to tell. The fact that the main quest alone only gets you to level 68, if you are lucky, is really bad. The puppet shows my favourite part of pirate ever were very average. For these reasons, it cannot be in the top 5. I was highly disappointed by Valencia Part 2 and honestly feel it would have been better to not release it. It scored 14. That score is very reliant on the music of both parts. The Valencia themes are very good and really put the fear into Valencia.
starting the top five with some nostalgia is Wizard City. Everyone knows this world. It scored 15, and part of that higher score was with the storyline in the catacombs. That is one of my favorite stories, and is the coolest area in both games. Not particularly a fan of the early Wizard City story, but that's perhaps because I've been through it a few too many times. The music is nostalgic and a good mood setter for the game. The art after the graphical rework was spot on and brings Wizard City into the new decade. Number four goes to Polaris. This world is amazing. Nothing more I really need to say about it. I love the penguins, I love the story, I love questing in Polaris. It introduces the Arcanum and is a critical part to the wizard story and as a pirate player it is nice to see its inclusion into the spiral after being mentioned and teased about since 2012. <laughs> Now we get into the top three, with third place going to the new kid on the block, Caramel. I rated Caramel 16 out of 20 stars. Nana should be proud of my rating because I was a very harsh fellow on a lot of these worlds. Caramel, along with Polaris, share the top fun score. I put that down to Kings Isle treating the first world of the new arc as a refresh and relaunch world. A cool story that implies what is coming leaves a lot of questions, but most importantly, make them short and dare I say, sweet. Caramel in particular had a lot of fun boss fights and was very light on the defeating collects, which makes people have a delightfully not sad time. The only thing that sells Caramel for me is the story, as the A plot, stopping Nana, was very obvious and I would have liked a few more twists. <laughs> Second place goes to Malibone. Similar to Mushu, this world is brought up by Pirate, which tied with number one. Averages really did Malibone dirty, giving it a score of 16. Wizard Malibone is amazing. Again, I love the shorter worlds, and it is the shortest world in Wizard 101. I love the atmosphere of Malibone. Running across the rooftops, tracking down gangs, basically becoming the police is a fun change. Pirate Malibone, however, is amazing. It rates very highly, not just by myself, but by a lot of other people. I think it has the best story of any world, its music is absolutely insane and tied with the number one world. The only downside to Marleybone is sewer time, which honestly stinks. I would have loved to explore a little bit more than to be stuck in the sewers as much. However, overall both Marleybones are amazing and I love the overlap of characters like Meow Yadi in both games to provide continuity and really connect both games together. <laughs> That leaves the number one place, which goes to Imperia. Now honestly, I didn't think I liked Imperia as much as I do. I guess it's a newfound love, or maybe it was there the whole time and I was just so caught up with other priorities to see. It was nice to finally put to rest two of the Spiral's biggest rivals come lovers once and for all, all while stopping the Spiral being ripped apart. It didn't have as many top placings as Pirate's Marleybone, only getting the top score for music but it really deserves the top rating. It is such a diverse world, and as I was rating these, I remembered some of the places like Mandala, which is a super cool area that has the best skybox in both games. Another favorite is the Reverie. The storytelling in this world is insanely good, and if I told a story this good, I would be forever proud. I would love to hear what your favourite world is, leave it down in the comments below and if you have watched this far you should consider subscribing. Otherwise, I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you soon, but until then, remember to craft outside the box.